is early in the morning, and we praise God in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May our Lord be with you. Let's call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, teach us to pray as you did. Lord, have mercy. Give us today our daily bread. Christ, have mercy. Forgive us our sins as we forgive one another. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And we pray, God of my giver of every good gift, put into our hearts love of your name, so that by deepening our reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Reading from the Book of Wisdom. Who can know God's counsel? Or who can conceive what the Lord intends? For the deliberations of mortals are timid, and unsure are our plans. The corruptible body burdens the soul and the earth shall raise down the mind that has many concerns. And scarce do we guess the things on earth, and what is within our grasp we find with difficulty. But when things are in heaven, who can search them out? Or whoever knew your counsel, except you had given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high? And thus were the paths of those on earth made straight. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm, in every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. You make an end of them in their sleep. The next morning they are like the changing grass which at dawn springs up anew, but by evening wilts and fades. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. And may the gracious care of the Lord our God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. In every age, you have been our A reading from a letter of St. Paul to the Philemon. I, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus, urge you on behalf of my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent so that the good you do might not be forced but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother, beloved especially to me, but even more so to you as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. The word of the Lord.
May our Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus and he turned around and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating father, mother, wife, children, brother, sister, even his own life, a person cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there's enough to finish it to completion? Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, onlookers would laugh at him and say, this one began to build, he didn't have the resources to finish. Or what king marching into battle would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him with 20,000 troops. If not, while well, still far away, he'll send a delegation asking for peace terms. In the same way, any one of you who does not denounce, renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. Gospel of the Lord. So the gospel said, which of you wishing to construct a tower would not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there's enough to complete it? It could have said, Father Edwards asks, how much is it going to cost to put the air conditioning in? And only then does he begin the air conditioning project. You're all supposed to laugh. I know it's early in the morning. I have priest friends who do the project and then say, let's raise the money, and the money doesn't come in. So they have to go and borrow and pay a lot of interest. We do it the right way. Ask for the money first, then you begin the project. Do we do it wrong as a church? Do we do it backwards? You know, people often say the, the person who becomes a Catholic, like through the RCIA in their 40s and 50s, are often much better Catholics than the cradle Catholic, which I imagine every single person in this church right now is a cradle Catholic. They often become better Catholics than people like me and you who, you know, were, were, were given no choice about becoming a Catholic. We didn't think about it. They, were, they made us Catholic. They made us Christians. They didn't think about it ahead of time and didn't say, okay, now become one. The adult Catholic did. And it, they often are very good Catholics. And we have a lot of Catholics I haven't seen in 20 years. Would it be better to say, well, let's first see if this person is going to be a good Christian and then baptize them? Should we do that? Many people make that argument that we do it backwards. Let's see what they have and then Baptizing. You can make that argument. You can. You can make that argument. Church is not going to change what it's been doing for 2,000 years, but you can make that argument. Here's what you have to understand. You and I, I'm assuming you're a cradle Catholic. I most certainly am. You know, we were raised in a certain way. Just as in school you learned your ABCs and your times tables, the, the cradle Catholic, me and you, were, were given very specific do's and don'ts. You know, Easter duty, mass every week, regular confession, don't do this and don't do that. They're very rigid, it worked. You know, you learn the basics, you do. That, 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 that works just as learning math works, and the times tables works, and long division works. But the person who becomes a Catholic later in life doesn't learn Catholicism or Christianity better. They learn it differently. When it's done right, they don't learn the ABCs like you and I did, the baby steps. 
They didn't ask, and they don't ask if they're well-trained adults. What do I have to do to get into heaven? What they're trained to do is ask, what is God doing in my life? Rather than what do I have to do to get into God's life? That's why many of us come, well, because we're, we're taught we have to come. They come because they want to come and celebrate how they saw God acting in their lives all week. I'm not saying they're better than me and you, the Catholic who comes late in the game, but they're just trained maybe in a deeper way. I'll, I'll give you an example. The, Jesus saw this big crowd and he's like, do you guys realize that to be my disciple means there's going to be a lot of crosses? Like, do you, do you get that? What it's going to cost you? You know, the, the, the richer person who becomes a Catholic later looks at the crosses they have, and everybody has them, and they ask different questions. How, how is God working through the cross? Instead of praying like we do, get rid of the cross, they say, how is God working through the cross? On October 4th, 1994, I lost a kidney, and my life was forever changed. But I, I realized laying there on the gurney that I was learning humility. Boy, do you want to get humiliated laying on a gurney like that? And I learned trust. I barely knew the doctor and didn't know the nurses who were going to be yanking a vital organ out of my body. Now that's faith. And I learned patience. I'm used to things happening like this. As you know, I like to work fast. It took weeks to recover from that. And through that cross, I learned patience. I learned humility, I learned faith, and I learned to count my blessings, which were more than I had the ability to count. But it took the cross to teach me that. You know, and when, you, when you work on an ABC level like we do at Cradle Catholics, you don't get what the deeper person had to say, let's not ask what I have to do, but what God is doing. See how that happens? I'm not saying that the person who becomes a Catholic as an adult is better. I just think they make Catholicism better. They don't make better Catholics. They make it better. Ask deeper questions. Don't come to church because you have to. Come to church because you need to celebrate what God did for you this week and what he's going to do next week. It makes it a richer experience. You'll sing better. You'll pray better. And I think you'll love better. Let us stand, my friends, and we'll profess our faith in Almighty God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things, visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He'll come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. We put our prayers before Almighty God. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who have given up everything to follow Jesus find joy in the path that they have chosen. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That workers' rights be recognized and supported around the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Cross class of 1962, who celebrate their 60th year anniversary, May God bless all of them and their families. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our military, police, firefighters, first responders, healthcare workers, and all those serving in dangerous professions, that the Holy Spirit will guide, direct, and protect them at all times, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the containment and eradication of the COVID-19 virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Andy Spiraglia, for whom this Mass is being offered, that they may live eternally with Christ their Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us end the petitions by praying the vision prayer. Jesus, we are your people. We praise you as Savior and Lord. Deepen our commitment to you, your church, and each other. Let us all share more actively in spreading the good news of God present among us. Help us reach out to those who have not yet experienced the joy of participating in parish life. Inspire us to seek justice and peace for all members of our parish family and beyond. Assist us to live in your gospel of compassion and love and service to those in need. Mindful of our many blessings, we are especially grateful for your gift of our parish family, family dedicated to Mary, Mother of God, your spouse Joseph, and our beloved saints, Anthony, Vincent, Stanislaus, and Stephen. Lord, send us your spirit. Make us alive as we have never been. Let us celebrate together and place our hope in you. Amen. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. God will give us the gift of true prayer and true peace. Graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty. And by partaking in this sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours. Jesus humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. By his rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we praise you as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it and gave it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And 
similar way, when supper ended, he took a chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity with Francis, our Pope Joseph, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, all who died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Together we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace to the Lord be with you always. We share a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
So I hope you notice that we have the Marian Society is offering a night of reflection at a nice restaurant up in Covington Township off 435. It's about a 10-minute ride. It's not far at all. And they have a nice little back room at Mendocino's, who's a parishioner here. And Deacon uh, Joe, who I think you'll agree is a very good homilist, will speak on service, the path to joy. And it'd be a, del a delightful night, $10. The dinner itself should probably cost 15 or 20 but the dinner is only 10 and then the talk is included, so you can't beat that. And uh, we, all, we all love this, so we all have to serve. Maybe that's at home, maybe it's here, who knows? It could be anywhere. But uh, it should be a, a grand night, so sign up. Also, there are still tickets for the night at the races on the 24th. It's a great night to have a little fun, make up for the third night of the block party, which we canceled this year. It's just hard to get that many workers for a third night. People are dead tired. The night at the races is fun. You can yell and scream and for your horse and bring your own food, bring what you want. It's $10 to get in. Other places, it might be 20 to 25 hours, is 10 I'm a very cheap person, in case you haven't noticed. I try to keep things very low for you, so come on and have some fun that night. Let us all stand to pray. Grant that your faithful people, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and the Eucharist, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Mighty God blesses our families, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Our liturgy ends, we go in peace, glorifying God with our lives. Thanks be to God. We'll do 202.